Hello, I have a very exciting video today, and that is my ALA haul. If you guys don't know what ALA is, it's the annual librarian association conference. I went to it in January 2020, and then the world, you know, like ended. And so this is the first time they've had it in person again, and so I finally went with Madison from Princess of Paperback, Steph from Shut Up and Read, and Zoe from Little Reader's Corner. It was in Washington, D.C., and we had such a fun weekend together, and now I'm gonna show you all the books that I got. So at ALA, you can go around and you'll get advanced copies because um, the booksellers and publishers are trying to get their books in the hands of librarians so that they purchase them for their libraries. So I have so many ARCs, probably over 50, and last time I went, I bought every single thing I could get my hands on, this time I tried to only grab the things that I like really thought I had a chance of reading but that's still a lot of books so I'm not gonna go too in-depth with this because there is a lot to get through but let's get into this haul I'll start with the first book that I have already read which is For Butter or Worse by Erin La Rosa and this is a rom-com about two rival hosts on a cooking show we have nina who is an up-and-coming chef on the la foodie scene and then we have leo who's a restaurateur who owns this like chain of family restaurants um and they like hate each other um but however when his teasing takes it a bit too far nina just up and quits the show together and then they are caught in a compromising situation together and so now everyone thinks that they're dating and so to help both of their careers they decide to fake date so classic fake dating um definitely if you're a foodie you will love to read this because there's so many wonderful descriptions of food i was very hungry the entire time that i read it here we have the second death of edie and violet bond by amanda glaze and this is on sale october 2022 um and this thing kind of got like a little a little bent because i mailed my books back but it's a the herbs of death a medium's guide to interacting with the spirits so as you can see it's very horror like and i'm i've been really into horror lately so i'm very excited so sacramento 1885 so edie and violet are twins and they are powerful mediums um violet can open the veil between life and death and edie can step through into the spirit world but that couldn't save them when their mother died and their father threatened to commit them. So now they've joined a spiritualist like sideshow, carnival, and they demonstrate their real talents under the guise of communicating with spirits. And you know, spirits will say things that wasn't weren't proper for young ladies at the time. Um, but when Violet's act goes terribly wrong one night, they realize that the dark spirit responsible for their mother's death has crossed into their world and is hunting them. This just sounds so cool i love these types of stories i definitely might pick it up closer to october because very spooky this book is you me and our heartstrings by melissa c and this one already came out on may 31st 2022 so we have noah who's a cello prodigy and daisy who is a disabled violin player decide to do a duet so they could both get an audition to juilliard but they think that maybe doing this duet will actually sink their chances because they have different tastes but after their performance goes viral, the rest of the country falls for them as much as they're falling for each other. And basically, like, they don't seem to care about their talent or their music anymore. They just care about, like, their, their own story about them that they've written. How Daisy is, like, overcoming her cerebral palsy and Noah's, like, a saint for looking past it. And Daisy's just tired of her disability being the only thing that people see when they look at her. And so is there, the cost of their dream suddenly too high? Next in the pile is a 2022 Night Sky Almanac. Um, honestly, I just, I picked it up because it has star maps in it. And I think that's cool. Here we have a Bone Weaver by Aiden Polydorus. And I believe it's Russian inspired. So it's about the Kosa Empire, which rules in tension. Um, but Toma lives blissfully disconnected from the conflict with her adoptive family of the undead. And then she meets Vanya, a charming commoner branded as a witch, and the dethroned Tsar Mikhail himself. And the unlikely trio bond over trying to restore Mikhail's magic. Next, I picked up this a comic by Kemi Garcia and Gabriel Piccolo, and it's Teen Titans Beast Boys Loves Raven, and I mean the title says it all, what more could you want? And on the back it says, the romantic meetup we've all been waiting for. And then I got this sampler chapter of The Fairy Queen, um 
and this is someone that took the fairy queen which is this like very epic poem from the 1500s it's like almost unreadable today and like translated it into like a, a readable novel so if you're looking for a way to digest a very complicated text in a more modern form this would be it and the author was there and she was lovely and she told us all about her work okay i'm very excited for this one this is the makeup test by jenny l howe and this is out september 2022 and this is definitely for fans of the love hypothesis because it has that same academic and misa lovers setting so Allison Avery has finally been accepted into this competitive PhD program for medieval literary literature um, and she is like so happy and she's got this until she's assigned to TA for the same professor with her ex-boyfriend Colin. And it starts as heartbreak warfare but turns into an all-out duel and they are competing for a spot on a research trip. And so it's like second chance romance, enemies to lovers, and academia medieval literature just sounds like the perfect mix of things this book is salt and sugar by rebecca carfalo and this one is on sale november 1st so this place takes place in brazil where Lari's family bakery salt has been at war with sugar the molina's bakery across the street so when Lari's grandmother passes away and a new supermarket moves to town everything changes Trying to protect her home, Lari teams up with Pedro Molina to try and save both of their bakeries after their generations of family rivalry. This book is Dead Flip by Sarah Farizan, and as you guys know, I have really been on like a YA horror kick, so I had to pick this up, especially because the cover looks like 80s retro horror and definitely gives Stranger Things vibes. So it's set in 1993. A group of friends Corey, Maz, and Sam. However, Sam has been missing for six years, and Corey and Maz are now high school seniors and they don't talk anymore. Corey thinks that Sam is dead, but Maz thinks he may have been kidnapped by a supernatural pinball machine. However, Sam returns still 12 years old, and so Maz and Corey are thrown back together to solve what really happened to him. I mean, the vibes are immaculate. Okay, here we have You're a Mean One. Matthew Prince by Timothy Janowski, and it's a Christmas novel. Um, obviously, the the title is a play on The Grinch, which is one of my favorite Christmas movies. Um, and I met Timothy at ALA, and he is literally such a sweetheart. It was so nice talking to him. I have another one of his books somewhere, too. And then he signed it. Look at that, in that nice rose gold ink. The tagline is, find a little joy to the world, not today, Santa. So Matthew Prince is young, rich, and charming, and spoiled. But his parents don't really remember that he exists, and the press is obsessed with him. So after a misstep, he's basically packed away to his grandmother's in this small town. He's stuck in this festive winter wonderland and he has to share the space with none other than Hector Martinez, an obnoxiously attractive local who is unimpressed by him. And now they're forced to go to this charity gala together and things go from there. And it's called an effervescent Christmas LGBTQIA plus new adult rom-com perfect for fans of Schitt's Creek and Red, White, and Royal Blue. Sign me up. Okay, this one's, I just like love the floppiness of this one. Monarch Rising by Harper Glenn, and it's coming out October 4th. And it's called The Selection Meets the Hate You Give. Mm -mm. So in a near chilling future new United States of America, Joe Monarch has grown up in the impoverished borderlands of New Georgia. She's given one chance to change her fate if she can survive a boy trained to break hearts. So it seems like every year there's a lineup and you can be selected to leave the ashes and move to the glittering rich future. And then once she's plucked from the lineup, she still needs to impress the reps from New Georgia. Basically like on her path there is Coventry Wells who has been groomed as an emotional weapon and basically set out to break her heart. I mean, this sounds really freaking cool, so. I definitely want to read this. Okay, I am so excited for this one because I adore Mara Rutherford and this might be my favorite cover of the year, Poison Season. It's a Charlie Bowater cover. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, outsiders are always given a choice, the forest or the lake. Either way, they're never heard from again. So Lilo has spent her entire life on Endla, this island, and it has like this sentient forest and lake and basically no outsiders are allowed in and if they come in they get to choose which way to die however one day she sees a boy drowning in the lake and she does the unthinkable and saves him and so lilo begins to question like the fabric of her society and why they are so isolated just sounds so cool 
again another horror book that i picked up this one is called sugaring off by gillian french and i mean i just think this cover is really really freaking cool oh it's not it's not a horror i thought it was a horror it has a, a romance but it seems like a hard-hitting romance it's out in november so we have owl who was left deaf after an accident that led to her father's incarceration and now she's a tracker explorer and wildlife enthusiast and then she meets cody who is hired to help with the sugaring off and they risk a romance that their families are desperate to stop and basically she like figures out that cody is like in some trouble and she needs to help him and there's a murder mystery as well just sounds like a very compelling, hard-hitting romance. Here, out in September 2022, is The Epic Story of Every Living Thing by Deb Coletti. So, we are following Harper Prolux, who has lived her whole life with an unknown sperm donor father, and she really feels like she needs to find her father to kind of understand herself. Um, an unexpected Instagram post leaves her to some of her half-siblings, and together they journey to Hawaii to try and find their sperm donor father. And that leads her to face some even bigger questions about herself. It just seems like a very good coming of age, finding yourself kind of novel. So this one that I got was actually a finished copy. It's called The Valkyrie's Daughter by Tiana Warner, and the tagline is, She-Ra meets Thor in an epic fantasy perfect for fans of Adrian Young. So Sigrid is paired with like a plain mare at birth, which means she's not going to be a Valkyrie, but when this battle comes, she like has a vision of herself being this Valkyrie leader. She ends up allying herself with Miriam, who is a fallen Valkyrie and is working for the enemy. And so Sigrid is kind of left behind this ordinary life and gone on this mission, and she has some awakening feelings for Miriam as well. So this is Sapphic. Mr. Perfect on Paper by Jean Meltzer is coming out August 9th, and this is a Jewish rom-com. So Dara is the creator and CEO of a popular Jewish dating app called JMate, but she's been idling in her own life. And her beloved Bubby shares Dara's checklist for the perfect Jewish husband on live TV, and now they're proposing to turn her search into a reality show. However, this guy that's running the show, Chris, doesn't fit any of Dara's checklists. However, they start to form an attraction to one another. So I love that it has like the reality show element. I really enjoy books like that. The Vermilion Emporium by Jamie Paxton is coming out on in November 2022. And it's called The Radium Girls Meets Hell's Moving Castle, which is really interesting because The Radium Girls is a nonfiction about radium factory workers. So basically like this Vermilion Emporium appears and Quinta and Twain meet outside the Emporium and in there they find a book that teaches them how to weave starlight into lace. They get commissioned by the ruler to make a dress, but they can't make one without like finding more starlight and the secret to finding starlight has been lost and destroyed for probably a good reason. So this one sounds really cool. Definitely has that like magical, quirky, unique vibe to it like the Night Circus and interested to see how this one goes. Next is Nothing More to Tell by Karen M. McManus. She is the author of One of Us is Lying and has many YA thrillers. Five years ago, Bryn left her school after the shocking murder of her favorite teacher. And the case was never solved. And now Bryn is moving home and starting her dream internship as a true crime show. And so she's determined to find out what really happened. Here we have Queen Among the Dead by Leslie Livingston, and this is actually a bound manuscript, not an arc, so as you can see, like, the cover is not, like, fully covering it, and it's a Celtic YA fantasy set in the ancient kingdom of Erie, inspired by the legend of the first true queen of Ireland, which is pretty cool. I definitely want to read more Celtic things since I am Irish, just like, connect to my roots. Nev is the youngest daughter of the king, and Ronan is the druid's apprentice turned thief, and he makes a living by selling stolen spells. They should be enemies, but their shared hatred of the druids makes them allies. When Eerie is threatened by a power struggle, Nev needs Ronan's help to secure her place on her family's throne. And this one comes out in January of 2023, so sometime before this one. This one is Jagged Little Pill by... Eric Smith was with Alanis Morissette, Diablo Cody, and Glenn Ballard, and this is a novelization of the Broadway show, which was like, I think, kind of based on Alanis Morissette's music. So that's pretty cool. I haven't seen the musical or anything like that, so I don't know too much about the story, but I am interested to see this one because I've never read a novelization of a musical. Ooh, this is a flappy one. 
This is a Ruinous Fate by Kaylee Smith, and this is out in January, but I've heard some really cool buzz for it so far. And it says, Fate does not choose the weak, Fate chooses the ready. Calope is a witch, and her fate is tied to the witch's dice. And they've blessed her kind with uh, limitless magic, but also set them on a path towards destruction. And so she's deserted her coven, um, and she has a secret. She's only three rolls away from becoming the last blood warrior and starting the fates war that will decimate her people and eradicate their magic. So this is really interesting because I am intrigued by the idea of magic being tied to dice. I've never seen that done before. Um, it sounds almost kind of like a like a D and D type deal, so I'm really interested to check this out. Here we have After Dark with Roxy Clark by Brooke Lauren Davis. Roxy Clark's family is believed to be cursed because there's so many things that have happened in their small town that are linked back to the family. However, Roxy is like fascinated by it, and so she um, creates a ghost tour that is like woven with her ancestors' history and becomes like this hit. But then six months ago, her sister's boyfriend was found stabbed to death in a cornfield. And then Roxy becomes fixated on finding the murderer. This is really cool. It sounds very eerie and kind of like tongue in cheek. So interested to check this out probably in like October. And this is out in October. This one is really cool. It's called If You Could See the Sun by Anna Leung. And this is out October. It's about a Chinese American girl who monetizes her strange new invisibility powers by discovering and selling her wealthy classmates most scandalous secrets. That's pretty cool. This one is Bravely by Maggie Stiefvater, who's the author of The Raven Cycle. And this one already came out and it is a novelization of Brave, which I actually have not seen yet. I would like to watch it. So I will probably have to watch that first before I read this. Next, I have an arc for A Game of Retribution by Scarlett St. Clair. This is in the Hades saga. So we have the Hades and Persephone series, which has books from Persephone's POV and Hades POV. And this is the next one from his POV. And this is a retelling where like Olympus is a modern day city and Persephone is like this undercover journalist trying to run away from her past. And then she enters into a deal with Hades who owns a bunch of gambling dens. I'm really excited to start reading it because I liked The King of Battle and Blood by Scarlett St. Clair a lot. So I feel like I'm gonna love her touch of darkness series and I think it's really interesting that she has like kind of like two series going in the same world at the same time and they bring different things to the series with different POVs so I'm looking forward to this. Here we have Lumaria by Melissa Landers. This is out in December. So Talia has no idea that her boyfriend Nathaniel is a mystic and second in line to the throne of a secret aspirational magical community and mortals have never been allowed inside. Till Nathaniel's cousin is about to get married and Talia gets to be his plus one. Except Talia doesn't want it because she thinks the mystics are stupid. So after a few days, she's kind of won over by this community until the wedding and everyone falls into a coma. Talia is pegged as the culprit. And so she kind of has to like break this curse, which I think is pretty cool. So I hadn't heard of this one before where I thought it sounded really interesting and it's out in January 2023 and it's Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, a novel by Heather Fawcett and I love this cover. So Emily Wilde is a Cambridge professor and she is an expert on the study of fairies. And so she arrives to like a small town to do research on these fairies and then when she arrives she doesn't really want to like befriend anyone but then her academic rival shows up and basically he gets in the middle of her research and frustrates her. And so she has to contend with him. It sounds really interesting, spit on fairies and academic rivals to lovers. So I'm really intrigued to check this out. This one is Honey and Spice by Bolu Babalola. And this is out in July. So I think it might've already come out. So this is a book that centers on a young black British woman who has no interest in love. Um, and unexpectedly finds herself caught up in a fake relationship with the man that she warned her girls about. So she was basically like, you should stay away from this guy, he's a player. Basically she like ends up kissing him and she kind of has to fake date him to salvage her reputation. Sounds like a fun time. I'm always down for a good fake relationship book. I got this really cool manga. It's called Frieren Beyond a Journey's End by Kanehito Yamada and Tsukasa Abe. Um, and it's about elf mage and Freerin and her courageous fellow adventurers. And they've already defeated the demon king and brought peace to the land. Now she's like outliving all of her friends. And so the funeral of one of her friends kind of like makes her realize her own immortality. 
And so she sets out to fulfill the last wishes of her friends and begins a new adventure. That's kind of sad, um, but I feel like a lot of times there are like these immortal creatures and their immortality isn't really explored, so I'm interested to check this out. This one's out in August and it's called The Hookup Plan by Farah Roshan. London is a successful pediatric surgeon and she's like super stressed so her friend's like, you should have a one night stand. Um, however, she ends up having a one night stand with Drew Sullivan, who's a millionaire and her, her arch nemesis. And Drew's back in Austin to decide whether the hospital that London works in is to remain open or not. Very cool. I like it's gonna have some like doctor millionaire vibes. And I think this one would be really, really fun. This one makes me laugh because at ALA we were calling it the MILF novel. Um, it's called Mistakes Were Made by Meryl Wisner. So Cassie Klein goes to an off-campus bar to escape family weekend and she's looking for a one night stand and it happens. And then her friend brings her to bring her mom and it's the woman that she slept with the night before. So it's best friend's mom. That sounds so fun. Here I have They Drown Our Daughters by Katrina Monroe, and this one is horror. So they say Cape Disappointment is haunted, and Meredith Strand and her young daughter return to Meredith's childhood home on the Cape, but it seems more haunted by regret than any relevant force. But Meredith's mother is suffering from Alzheimer's and is convinced that the ghost stories are real and that there's something in the water watching them, waiting for them. And it's reaching out to marry this daughter for the way it has to every woman in their line for generations. It's pretty cool. I love like the whole spooky ghost story thing. Here we have Light Lark by Alice Astor, but this one is like super highly anticipated on book talk and whatnot. I want to just read you the back. Welcome to the Centennial. Every hundred years, the island of Light Lark appears for only 100 days to host a deadly game where rulers of six realms fight to break their curses and win unparalleled power. Each ruler has something to hide. Each curse is uniquely wicked. To break them and to save themselves in their realm, one ruler must die. To survive, Isla Crown must lie cheap betray, even as love complicates everything. And it says it's filled with secrets, deception, romance, and twists worthy of the darkest thrillers. I mean, this just seems like it has it all right up my alley. Very excited. Next, I have The Drowned Woods by Emily Lloyd-Jones. And I have read The Bone Houses by her. And this is set in the same world, which is exciting. So Mare is the last living water diviner. And she spent years running from the prince who bound her into his service. The prince has done some bad things with the knowledge that she's given him. And so she's run from his reach. But Mare is old. Old handler returns with a proposition. Use her powers to bring down the prince that abused them both. And there's also a corgi that may or may not be a spy. Sign me up. This is the other book by uh, Timothy Janowski that I've mentioned and it is signed. This is about Ren who has never been kissed. He sends emails to all the boys he loved before he came out and in the morning he's like what did I do? And then Derek Haverford is Ren's number one pre coming out crush and his drive-in theater's new social media intern. And then they are kind of like drawn together. I mean, this just sounds so fun. We have the drive-in vibes, the like, it's all the boys I've loved before vibes, and I'm here for it. Next up is Soulmates by Susan Lee, and this is out um, September 20th, and this just, this cover is beautiful, first of all. And this is said uh, to have K-drama vibes. So Hannah has the next year all planned out, and she has her wonderful boyfriend Nate, but then Nate breaks up with her saying that they have nothing in common because he and all of her friends are obsessed with K-pop and K-dramas and Hannah is not and Hannah like feels like she's been trying to shun her like Korean side for forever and now that's like the thing that has her on the outs and then she has her former best friend Jacob Kim, who actually stars in K-dramas, comes back to San Diego um, after like kind of being burned out by the industry and her and him need to kind of figure out what went wrong in their friendship. I mean, it just sounds adorable. And here we have one of the most highly anticipated arcs, I would say, is Fat Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong. This is a follow-up series to the These Violent Delights, and I don't know too much about it except it follows one of the side characters from These Violent Delights, and it's set in 1931, Shanghai. Uh, yeah, it follows Rosalind Lang. So that's all I want to know going into this. It is thick. It's like almost 500 pages. That's all I know. Cover is pretty. Excited to have an arc of this. I should probably read Our Violent Ends so I can know what's going on going into this. Okay, I have just a few more. 
Um, here we have Belladonna by Adeline Grace. Really looking forward to this one because this cover is so pretty. Um, we follow Signa, who's been raised by like a string of guardians, and so she goes to this house and they're living at Thorngrave. So the patriarch, the dad, like mourns his late wife. The son like grapples for control of the family's waiting reputation. The daughter suffers from like the same illness that killed their mother. Um, and then Signa starts to see the mother's spirit and she claims that she was poisoned. So she's trying to uncover the culprit and she has enters into an alliance with Death himself. And they have some sort of like connection to each other. So it's like, seems like part like haunted house, murder mystery, like those gothic vibes that I love. Here I have A Broken Blade by Melissa Blair out in August. And this was first originally published um, and became like a TikTok thing. Like this author sent out this book without like an author's name on it to a bunch of TikTokers and they had to figure out who it was that published it, um, which I think is pretty cool. And this is about Kira, who is a king's blade and the most talented spy and the king's favorite assassin. When a mysterious figure moves against the king, she is called to track him down and she tracks him into the Feylands. But when she gets to the Feylands, she realizes everything may not be what it seems. Here I have Defend the Dawn by Bridget Kimmerer. I'm so excited. I absolutely love Defy the Night by her. It's like a Robin Hood retelling following Tessa and her best friend Wes. And they basically steal these moonflower petals that keep her from getting sick from the rich and give them to the poor and like she basically like confronts the crown when something unthinkable happens to Wes and like it's just so good so many twists and turns and really like a big sweeping like political fantasy and a, a very good romance I love the romance and I'm really excited to continue on with this series because I just loved it so much here we have when in Rome by Sarah Adams this one just seems so freaking adorable and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna redo the, the blurb because I it puts it much better than I can a burnt out pop star stranded in small town Kentucky can't help falling for her unlikely knight in shining armor, the notoriously grumpy owner of the local pie shop, in this charming slice of romance from the author of the TikTok sensation The Cheat Sheet. So I love that like pop star ex baker pairing. I think that's gonna be so cute. And the last book I have to share with you guys is the one that I'm so freaking excited that I got and this is the American Roommate Experience by Elena Armaza which is the follow-up to the Spanish Love Deception which I freaking loved that romance and now we are following Lena's friend Rosie. We follow Rosie who quits her high paying job and wants to be a romance writer and then basically her ceiling crumples on her so she heads to Lena's empty apartment not knowing that Lena has rented out a room to her cousin Lucas and so it's there romance and Lucas is like determined to help Rosie and when she says that she's in the creative slump for a romance novel uh, he proposes that he'll take her on a set of experimental dates just to jumpstart her romantic inspiration so I mean I'm just I can't wait I literally cannot wait so thank you guys for watching my haul I honestly got so so many great anticipated releases i am so excited i can't wait and i can't wait to share my thoughts on all these books with you guys thank you so much for watching please leave a little um rose emoji and let me know which of the books in my haul was your favorite and the one that you're the most excited about have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one